Welcome, bienvenue. Let's talk. So I'm pleased to say that um, I have at least a couple of things I now discover in common with uh, Roberto and Natty in particular. The first, of course, would be a commitment to Canada. I'm sure I share this with pretty much all of you. As the sort of place where everybody can be who and what they want to be, where they're able to define themselves by the things that drive them. The second is that from this day onward, uh, they and I will forever be able to describe ourselves as people who can say, Paul Schaefer? Yeah, Adam is my opening act. <laughs> so. Um, the Institute, as a couple of you have kindly mentioned, we do a lot of things in the citizenship and history fields, uh, all over the place, all over the country, and all sorts of fields. But what you do know us best for is, of course, the Heritage Minutes, as vignettes that take important moments of our history and recreate them to make people aware of what the significance was then, how it shapes us. And the thing about history, of course, is yesterday is the roadmap to today. How we got here, how it shapes who we are, how we understand ourselves. And beyond just a roadmap to today, it's also a game plan for tomorrow because by studying the mistakes we've made before, as well as the things that we've done very well, we get a sense of that path to continue following. So I want to talk for the next couple of minutes about a couple of guys who did things really well in the past in ways that shape us still, who offer lessons that we can still learn from them. One is Sir John A., whose 200th birthday will be commemorated in 2015. And the other is Sir George Etienne Cartier, and the extraordinary friendship they had and how it shaped the country. And, you know, starting out, it would be very hard to imagine two people less likely to get along with each other. Cartier was, by the current definition, a real Quebecois de vie souche of old, old stock dating right back to Jacques Cartier, who, in fact, was, he was a descendant of. Um, so a very distinguished lineage, a very aristocratic manner. Um, he married well in terms of societal placement, but he didn't leave his heart there. In fact, he really gave his emotional piece to the cousin of his wife with whom he was happiest and was a person he really loved. He loved to talk more than he loved to listen. He once spoke for 13 hours, which I don't propose to do today, on a piece of legislation in Parliament. And he felt very, he felt initially, the way a lot of Quebecers have uh, over time, in the primacy of his home area of what was then Lower Canada. And he was very vigorous and quite heroic, in fact, on his side fighting with the Patriots, no friend of the British, of course, in 1837, no friend of the British, and in many ways no friend of a lot of people, uh, people attached to the institutions that later became Canada. He fought to the point where he had to go into exile in Vermont. He was not a welcome figure back, certainly among the British. Macdonald was, by contrast, an immigrant, as so many people are in this country today, from Scotland. A bit of a punk, frankly, a bit of a punk all his life. Um, he was not distinguished or aristocratic. He was a street fighter. What he did share in common with Cartier was he loved to talk. And he had a pretty ready tongue and a pretty nasty one at times, too. So you imagine them getting together, first of all, with every reason not to like each other, and second of all, not to listen to each other, which maybe stopped them from not liking each other as much. Um, they evolved quite differently, and MacDonald really could have spent as much time in jail as he later spent as a lawyer sending people to it in his early years. We know the stories about drunkenness. We know those continued through. He never denied it in a way he was proud of it. At one point in his life, somebody said, you are drunk. And he said, yeah, but you'd rather have a drunk MacDonald than a sober George Brown, I think it was. <laughs> so they were growing up at the same point in history. When Cartier, Cartier from 1837 had been in exile, he eventually learned he would be welcomed back. And he had a change in thought. He had a homeland, lower Canada. But it occurred to him that to really, to build beyond that, he had to reach out. He had to become part of a greater sensibility and a greater building project. And those same thoughts were occurring to MacDonald, who had to make alliances which weren't naturally his, and that was something that they both brought to the table. Each was willing to reach beyond their natural constituencies, and each was actually willing to ally themselves with people who were more inclined at that point to be thought of as enemies. There was certainly um, some strong anti-Francophone sentiments outside of Lower Canada, and uh, George Brown would have been a good example of that at a point. MacDonald actually had the quality that he was pretty much nasty to everybody, so not just Francophones, but all sorts of different groups, and probably fellow Scots as well. But they came together, they formed an alliance, and Cartier decided that he would overlook anti-French sentiments among some of the people he worked actively with. Some of the people around Brown, including Brown himself, grew beyond those sentiments as they began to work more with Cartier. And together, they worked to build a country. And in fact, from 1848, um, Cartier was elected to Parliament. 
From 1858 to 1862, Macdonald and Cartier served as, in effect, what could be called the co-prime ministers of Canada in building this nation. Um, they became extraordinary friends in that time and did a lot of things together and just were very warm to the point where, in 1873, Cartier died. Macdonald wept when he died. He also ordered on Parliament Hill that the first statue ever to be put up on Parliament Hill be erected to the memory of Cartier, and he said, had this to say about him. Let's find that. Cartier was as bold as a lion. He was just the man I wanted. But for him, Confederation could never have carried, which is true, according to what all the evidence says. So because of him, because of them, because of their alliance and their friendship, we are all Canadian today. So what's our bet? What's our piece of history about that going into 2017? Well, we're all Canadian today. Here's your challenge. What's your Heritage Minute? What's the moment for you, whether, as with the elder, you come from well pre-Canada, whether your family goes back generations, or whether you've arrived and become citizens in the last year? What's your defining moment, your thing, your anecdote, your exchange? Is it a ball hockey moment? Is it an exchange with somebody else? Is it a visit to another country when you looked around and said, I wish I was home. I don't have all the things here. Find a minute, think about it, define it, tell others about it, ask them what, there is, what theirs are, write them all down. We have a history. Thank you.